All right, we're back with video number four. It looks like we're talking about groundwater pulling it out of the ground uh, through wells. Deep subject. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure to pause, check out the learning targets, get ready to take your notes however you're taking them, and uh, let's start. All righty. So let's start with just a, a basic definition. I think we've all been to a park or someplace where we've seen this old-fashioned kind mm -hmm. of pump well, and that really is, in its very simplest form, a well, all it is, is a hole drilled into the saturated zone that you're pulling water out of. And we're going to talk about three kinds of wells. We're going to talk about an artesian well, a non-flowing artesian well, and a flowing artesian well. So we'll talk about the different situations that those wells occur under. Okay? All right. All right, let's start off with a kind of complex picture here. Um, should we talk about the one that's labeled the water table well here first? <laughs> looking at the different layers that we have, so the green layer on top is the unsaturated zone, mm -hmm. right? And then underneath that we have a blue layer that is an unconfined aquifer. So you see the water table separating the unsaturated from the saturated zone, and nothing is confining that aquifer from the top. Mm -hmm. Below that aquifer is a brown layer, or an aquaclude, aquatard, mm -hmm. And that's what separates that top aquifer from the aquifer underneath it. The aquifer underneath it is confined between the brown impermeable layer and that gray impermeable layer beneath it, right? So we have two different aquifers mm -hmm. separated by an impermeable layer. And we've got three different kinds of wells here. So yep. the simple well is the well you just drill from the surface into that first aquifer. That unconfined aquifer. The unconfined aquifer. Okay. And from that well, you're going to have water in the well at the level of the water table. And so to get that water out, you'd have to pump that up toward the top. Exactly. Because it's not under pressure, it's not getting pushed up, it's just where the line of the water table right. is. Right, so you got to use that pump or an electric pump, some sort of pumping yeah. system to <clears throat> extract water from that yeah. well. And that water table for the unconfined aquifer is just outlined in that blue that we can see there. And you can see the water level in the well itself of the ordinary well or the water table well. You right. can see that there. And that water table isn't always going to be at the same level. Mm -hmm. right? It's going to be recharged or there's going to be discharged. So that water table is going to go up and down. All right, because it's unconfined. There's nothing stopping it on that upper part at all. So most right. of the recharge for this aquifer is going to be from the surface. It's going to exactly. be from precipitation, and thus you have that fluctuation from dry to rainy season. So what about the other two types of wells, guys? Well, we have our we have our confined aquifer, and if you notice, it's kind of on this like slope. Mm -hmm. All right, and if you see that, we have a hydraulic gradient there. Mm -hmm. All right, and I think a lot of the stuff from Darcy's Law from a couple of videos ago are going to come into play here because there's pressure in there. Now, that aquifer is rechargeable because if you look at the far left-hand part of the diagram, you can see that it's open at the surface. So it is getting water from somewhere that is filling it up. But if you notice, down here at the base of what we're going to call this flowing artesian well, right? if you notice this dashed line that's above here, that's kind of this like pressure surface that we call that. It's kind of where the water table would be because of the pressure that it's under. And because the top of this well is below this line and with all the pressure on the water, it actually forces water out of the well. Um, so, so water flowing in the recharge area, because of the slope, it's pushing down mm -hmm. and that well is there so it's actually pushing the water out. Exactly of a, an area where there's low pressure. It's pushing it right out and the exactly. water will flow out freely. You don't have to pump it out. Nope. It's just going to flow out onto the surface. Okay. So now if you go further towards the right, we've got the same sort of setup. So we're drilling through that unconfined aquifer, through the confining unit, so like that impermeable layer, mm -hmm. and getting again into that confined aquifer. Okay. But this time it's a little bit different because the land surface where the top of the well is, is above where like the water table would be if that wasn't confined. Okay. So this one, the water is getting pushed up from that bottom aquifer all the way up towards that dashed line. Mm -hmm. But now we're going to have to do a little pumping to get it all the way up. Okay. Okay. 
But, like, is any of that water from that unconfined aquifer? Like, does that get mixed in with the confined aquifer? No, it's mm. separated by that unconfined, or by the confined layer, mm -hmm. by that aquitard layer, right? Okay. So we're looking at the picture, and there are three different wells, and there must be an advantage to having wells drilled into different aquifers, because when you're drilling a well, you're typically paying to drill by the foot. Mm -hmm. sure. So why would you want to drill a deeper well if you didn't have to? And there are lots of reasons why that might be the case, and we'll be talking about some of those in class. But we need to understand that there are these different types of wells. So I think we're going to look at them a little bit more the deeply in the yeah. next slide. Should we take a look at that? Yeah. All right, so really what we're doing here is we're comparing these two types of aquifers again. So the one on the bottom left, that's the unconfined, right? All right, so we have an unsaturated zone on top, mm -hmm. saturated table. zone. We just drilled a well, we have to pump water out of this. The level of the water in the well is going to be the same as the water table level. That's simple. So that one we're going to have to take some <clears throat> energy to get water up to the surface. Okay. It's not going to be able to just push up to the surface by itself. Okay. All right. And then the diagram on the upper right is that same kind of flowing artesian well system that we saw before. We see that the, the aquifer is confined. If you look on the left, you see the bedrock, which is impermeable. Water can't flow through there. And then we have an impermeable layer, which is outlined in black. So the water itself is confined to that space. So recharge is happening on the top left where you see the arrows coming in. And then we have a well to the right of that. The top of that well is above the pressure surface. Mm -hmm. So you have to pump water out of that. Exactly. But the next well over to the right, the top of the well is below the pressure surface, so water will freely flow out there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> let's go on to the next slide. All right, so here's one of the issues that can come up if you pump too much out of a well. Mm -hmm. I always think about milkshakes when I think about this one. Yeah, I do so too. <laughs> when I drink a milkshake, as I'm sucking out the straw or sucking the milkshake, Around the straw, it like dips down a little bit. Why is that? Well, it starts to depress a little bit. Not like it's getting sad. Um, it's based. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's really bad. Um, but as you start drinking out of it or pulling from the well, you've got all this pressure where you're basically depressing the water table. Okay. So you're moving it down, and the closer to the well you are, the more it's going to get sucked down towards the bottom of the well. So I'm guessing you're extracting the milkshake faster than the milkshake can flow in to okay. fill it mm -hmm. in. And the same thing with this cone of depression. If you're pumping out at a high rate, you're pulling water out faster than the recharge is through the aquifer mm -hmm. to keep the water table at the same level. And you get that depression. And it makes it look like a V here, but remember it's three-dimensional, so yeah, it really yeah, is yeah. all the way around, 360 degrees around that well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think we're talking about our last slide here. This is yeah. actually how yeah. um, artesian wells are really, or sorry, artesian, yeah, artesian wells are similar to what happens when we have a water tower. Yeah. Yeah. And we see those all over the place. They're very common. We have one right down Dempster, um, and we have them up along Northwest Highway for all the communities there. And that's how we actually provide pressure in all of the pipes to provide us water. So we're not just storing the water there because it's a convenient tank to store it in. There's no. actually a purpose to raising the water up higher sure. and creating that pressure to make the water flow through the system. So it's like we're taking the water table and we're kind of moving it up above where we want it to flow out. So then that way if we move it up, all we have to do is have a pipe that comes to our drinking fountain. You open up the drinking fountain and it sprays out. So we don't need a pump on everything. Otherwise yeah. we would need a pump on everything. Exactly. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Well, I guess we were pretty smart in designing the systems. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's the last slide in this video. Please jump out, take your quiz, and we'll see you in class tomorrow. Bye, guys. Bye.